How close was Utah to staying in the Pac-12 instead of joining the Big 12? We're talking about it on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcasts. This is your first time listening to our show. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. We'd love to interact with you guys in the comments. You can follow us on social media at Locked On Utes or my personal handle at JT Wistersill. My name is JT Wistersill, former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. And today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash Locked On College or enter the promo code Locked On College for a free white tech hat with any purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off we promise you on today's show we're going to be talking about some fall camp standouts also about some of the utah football players being named to the preseason honors but we have to start with more of utah going to the big 12 and in order to help us do that it's ksl sports's michelle bodkin joining us now and michelle when just how close was utah to staying in the pac-12 instead of joining the big 12 i think contrary to popular belief of all the people who were like this like utah always had to go to the big 12 this was always what was going to happen or they should have been the first one to jump ship everything that seems to have played out it looked like utah wanted to stay in the pac-12 and i do believe the reports that as of friday morning utah was one of the schools that wanted to sign the grant of rights deal i also believe the reporting that utah and kind of all the other schools were kind of waiting on what oregon and washington were going to do and especially oregon because it seemed like washington was just going to follow oregon because i felt like if oregon stayed then you get utah maybe the arizona school stay as well then you still have a viable conference going forward but as soon as oregon left it felt like being a viable conference going forward was kind of off the table and that's what i feel like really was the final push needed to get utah to be the last corner school what it seemed like to defect over to the big 12 overall but i believe utah was very close to staying in the pac-12 yeah uh you know everything i've been able to gather uh the some of the conversations i've had and hopefully you know over the next little while as things kind of cool down, as this stops being kind of such a raw big deal, hopefully I can get a few other people maybe a little bit closer to the situation to talk a little bit more. Uh, but I, the impression I, I always got from the jump was that Utah wanted things to work in the Pac-12 and that they were very much a part of the effort to try and make things work in the Pac-12. Yeah, I've had several people kind of tell me that Taylor Randall was a big part of the leadership as far as, you know, trying to source creative ways to stay together and, and look into that kind of stuff and keep everybody just kind of calm and, and collected and, and thinking clearly. Uh, and, and Mark Harlan as well, Utah's athletic director. Uh, unfortunately, that's not how things played out. And, uh, you know, I, I, that's not, and I'm not saying any of that to say that like Utah wasn't looking into other options. Like, obviously you have to, you know, weigh and just hear and, and have other plans B, C, all the way to Z <laughs> intact as well. And they were absolutely doing that. But, but goal number one was to try and stay in the Pac-12. That's not what happened. Uh, and, and yeah, there, there, there was a little bit of madness going on there because I think we all went to bed Thursday night thinking, okay, Arizona is going to pl pull the plug on this thing. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I was waiting yep. for is because they had that meeting the night before uh, with their board of directors or board of regents. Mm -hmm. And uh, so wake up third Friday morning yep. and I like I have a text message from someone that works in TV that said, Apple, Apple's coming through with the deal. It's a good deal. They're going to take it. It sounds like they're going to sign it. Um, kind of gave me a little, a little insight as to, you know, what they had heard um, from people directly with Apple as far as what, what that deal was going to look like. And then all of a sudden I start seeing, you know, Brett McMurphy and Pete Thamel and, and John Canzano, like they're all kind of reporting the same thing. Oh, they're the, mm -hmm. the remaining, nine Pac-12 members are, are getting ready to go into this meeting and sign their brand of rights the, it looks like the Pac-12 is going to pull this out at least for the time being and then I don't know maybe not even a minute into that meeting it all came crumbling down uh, because Oregon last minute it sounds like changed their mind uh, mm -hmm. and 
decided to make that jump to Fox, all of a sudden the Big Ten is having a meeting that was not on the schedule. And, uh, you know, a few, I don't know, maybe a half hour later, you know, it comes out that Oregon and Washington are in fact making that move to the Big Ten. And it, it was all over from there. I uh, didn't leave anybody else really any kind of other options. I mean, at that point, you know, Utah is probably looking like the premier program mm -hmm. in the league, and that's not necessarily an awful thing. Mm -hmm. But I think Utah is still in a place where they have some things to prove. And so I don't know that that necessarily carries an entire conference. And so, you know, it, it kind of just became – you know, the, we, we have to do plan B or I, I don't know where the big 12 necessarily fell in the hierarchy, but you know, they had to make other arrangements and, you know, it's it, here we are, we're doing the big 12 thing in 2024. It'll be interesting to see how that all goes. Uh, and, you know, I think, I think there's things about that move that also work for Utah moving forward. So I don't think it's a horrible thing. Uh, I, I, it's just not, I think, what anybody thought was going to happen, at least not on the Utah side of things. But, you know, it's it, you you can only do what you can do. And when your fate is controlled by so many other people, not just what you choose to do, you know, you, you sometimes have to make some really tough decisions. You absolutely do have to make those tough decisions. And I think one thing that was also just uh, very interesting to see and just kind of provide more clarity on in yesterday's press conference in which Mark Harlan and President Randall spoke to the media was they both you could tell that they had a plan in place. They knew what they were doing. They knew what the plan was going into this. They were never going to be. Look, I, I think I've seen a lot of comments, at least in my show. I don't know how many you've gotten on this, but a lot of people were like, Utah's going to end up back in the Mountain West Conference. Yeah. You could see that Utah, that president ran, or just in general, Utah being left behind. That was something a lot yeah. of fans were worried about in general. And that wasn't going to happen. Mark Harlan and President Randall were ready. Did they want to stay in the Pac 12? Uh, based on all the moves we've seen, it seems like they absolutely did want to, but with the way things play out, they had to do what was best for their university. And because they had strong leadership in place, they were ready to make that change. But outside of that, I was curious, was there anything else that really stood out to you yesterday, kind of during that press conference that you were kind of surprised or interested to learn about? Uh, no, I, you know, I, it was a pretty straightforward press conference. They, they didn't really say a whole lot. Um, and, and to be honest, that's probably for the best. Uh, mm. That's kind of what you expect. It's and and good on them too. Because yes. to be honest, this has been a very emotionally charged. Um, just I, like I mean, you know, I I felt like I was being thrown for loops constantly mm. because something I heard, you know, maybe five minutes ago that really truly was true was not true you know, five minutes later. And, mm -hmm. and so it's just like, crap, like, what, what do I do? Like, I, <laughs> I just, I just barely put this out here and it's mm -hmm. not true anymore. That's how quickly things moved. And so, you know, when you're the decision makers in the building uh, and, and you're having to like wade through all this information coming through and not only like keep track of what you're thinking and feeling, but trying to keep track of, you know, what at one time 12 and then 10 and then nine different people are also thinking and, and wanting to do and, and whether they're being honest or whether, you know, they're telling a bluff in order to like, you know, not, not get in trouble or, or you know, anything like that. It's, it's just, it's a lot to take in. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think there's a lot of reason for these presidents and ADs to be mad. Um, I, I think there's a lot of reasons for these presidents and ADs to be sad uh, you know, some of it falls on them and some of the decisions that have been made for the last 12 to 13 years. Uh, but some of it, you know, was out of their hands as well. And, and it was other people at work kind of behind the scenes that that caused a lot of this to to go down and happen the way that it did. Uh, but and and we I think we saw that in, in a lot of the responses. Obviously, everybody's kind of had their own press conference and stuff. And, and so we've seen like a range of emotions and feelings mm -hmm. and, and what people have been willing to talk about or not talk about. And I, I think Utah did a good job by just keeping it as neutral as possible. Um, you know, I thought they were really good about expressing the sadness that the conference fell apart and, and what that means for, you know, some of their conference mates that still haven't found a landing spot. Like that is a horrible, horrible place to be in. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, at, at the same time, expressing excitement at a new opportunity as well. Like, it, and I, I think that's sometimes hard for people to kind of understand and grasp that you can straddle a couple of different emotions all at once. 
Uh, and it's neither a bad thing or a good thing. It's just, it's human nature. And uh, I, I thought that uh, both Taylor Randall and Mark Harlan did just a really good job of trying to address that without causing a stir one way or another. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right because it would be very easy to your point about just all the emotions and everything that has happened yesterday. I think they even mentioned President Randall and Mark Harlan both did about at times where they each kind of helped cool each other down at one moment or another just because of how strenuous this process was overall. But it's done now and all that's left to do is kind of look ahead to the move to the Big 12. But we do have some football to actually talk about because football is coming up, Michelle. Really? You know, it seems like it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's, uh, it's far off and away. But we're going to be talking about the early fall camp standouts in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Football season is about to kick off, and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. That's right. If you think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to repeat, you bet on them to win the Super Bowl. Every time the Chiefs win in the regular season, you can win in the regular season when you bet on your team to win the Super Bowl. Just pick the team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use your bonus bets on the spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and earn bonus bets with America's number one sportsbook. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. All righty, Michelle, coming back into this one. Let's talk about some of the fall camp standouts so far. And I think the first guys that stand out to me at this moment would have to be the receiver position overall. Mm -hmm. It seems like the early winner just in general has been a Micah Pittman who's earned rave reviews. We've already seen he's got his own little highlight clip of Cam Risen throwing him the ball in, a, in one video in particular. He's earned praise from both Cam, uh, different coaches as well as Kyle Whittingham, of course, too. Um, and I could still even say the same for Emory Simmons and Mikey Matthews. We can talk about them in a second, but I really want to just focus on Pittman at first. It seems like his connection with Cam Rising going back to when they used to play together when they were younger has really paid off big. And I think Pittman's going to have a role in this offense as soon as the Florida game. I know there was some injury questions with him, but it, it sounds like he's doing fine. And I, I think he's got a good shot to play. Yeah, I, I think he was kind of one of the guys that we were, you know, cautiously watching what what's going to happen with that injury there. I think I'm trying to remember what the mm -hmm. prognostation is, yeah. was on on his kind of recovery. And it sounds like, you know, he's maybe been a little ahead of schedule uh, mm -hmm. as far as his rehab and, and some of that kind of stuff goes. And, and that maybe that situation wasn't as bad as it could have been. Uh, which is why we're seeing him him out and balling out the way that it sounds like he has been early on. Uh, I think that's fantastic news for Utah. Uh, they they just need they need some big time playmakers, and especially when you have a guy like Dalton Kincaid moving on. Now, granted, we're talking you know tight end versus a wide receiver, mm -hmm. but I mean he played kind of a wide receiver role for Utah. Um, you know, there's spots that are opened up, and so a guy like Micah Pittman can come in and maybe help fill, fill that gap and, and also throw in a new wrinkle. You know, now everybody's so used to, Oh, we have to look at the tight ends to be doing this. Well, mm -hmm. maybe this year Utah is actually going to do it with some of the wide receivers too. And, and hopefully, you know, there's a good mix for them. Cause I think there's some guys in that tight end room that absolutely can step up, mm -hmm. you know, in, in Kincaid's place and, and do some, some amazing things as well. So, you know, maybe you just, figure out a way to spread it around a little bit more, but I would absolutely say he's definitely been someone that's been called out as a standout. Um, you mentioned Emery Simmons, Mikey Matthews. Uh, I think Devon Bailey has also mm -hmm. gone some shout outs and it's kind of, you know, Devon's Devon, but there has been a little bit of, he's just getting more comfortable being kind of the leader and the head guy in the room. And that's always a good thing, right? Cause attitude reflects leadership. If, if you love watching, remember the Titans the way that I do. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so I think, you know, like having, having kind of your, your guy that's been there the longest uh, that kind of knows what's up uh, has, has several years under his belt, had to come from being a walk on to a scholarship player. And now, you know, there's some discussion about, he could be one of the better re receivers in the Pac-12 as well, if everything goes well for him. Uh, you know, that's the kind of guy you want leading your room, a guy that just works his butt off uh, and, and kind of just shows everybody kind of what the model is. So to me, it seems like there's a lot of good things going on in that wide receiver room. I'm curious to hear, you know, who else, where else. Um, I haven't gotten a whole lot of information on that. I expect mm -hmm. that to happen in the next couple of days as, as far as maybe some other standouts. 
Yeah, it has been kind of wide receiver heavy early, which and it's because that's what's new, right? Everyone's mm-hmm. always curious exactly. about that. And but to your point as well, sometimes we get so enamored with what's new, forget about how good some of the things you have already are, like a Devon Vele, who very well could be even better this year and was already really good last year. So mm-hmm. it's gonna be something that's exciting to see. Shifting over to the defensive side of the ball, I think the one for me has been Leavani Demuni. Uh, who's Corinne Reed was asked him about him a little bit last week and just talked about, you know, just the technique and just how poised and ready he is overall. And just say, you know, just one of those guys who just seems to know what he's doing, knows to be able to be in the right place in the right time. And we just know about Demuni in general has had played some really good football in the pac 12 in general. So it feels like Demuni has been a standout on defense, but once again, that is a guy that's kind of new that everyone's curious and asking questions about um, outside of just Demuni. Do you think there's anyone else that's really stood out on defense early in your conversations with the coaches and players? You know, I, I I think there's been some guys that like we kind of like secret whispered about, uh, mm-hmm. and one of them's Sioni Vaki. I mm-hmm. like I he's a he's a name that comes up all the time, um, especially talking about some of the younger guys. Uh, and I think you know so, some of the others have maybe gone a little. Uh, um, I think in relation to actually, it's Jaquindon Jackson. You know, everybody's talking about Jaquindon's going to break out. Jaquindon's going to break out. He's going to have a really great year. Mm-hmm. Which I agree with. I think I yeah. think people are going to be blown away by this guy. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think on the defensive side, it's Sione Vaki. But we've just yeah. been talking about Sione Vaki a whole heck of a lot less than we have been to Quinton. But I think it's just because when we think Utah football, we think, well, the entire defense is good. So, like, er- everybody on the defense mm-hmm. is going to break out. Like, that's not going to be shocking to anyone. Uh, but he, he is someone – I actually have a scout friend that was in town, and I talked to him a little bit about Sione. And, yeah, like, Sione stood out. So uh, – and Sione's young. Like, the NFL can't have Sione yet. So, uh, you know, that's a really good sign that someone that young is sticking out to someone uh, in the NFL ranks. And, of course, you know, Cole Bishop is another one. Uh, kind of, I think, in similar vein to Devon Bele. It's, mm-hmm. He's coming into his leadership. He's more comfortable. Cam gave him, you know, a shout out at media day saying, yeah, like he's doing a really good job, you know, becoming a leader and and really leading this group and, and being one of the responsible ones on, on the defensive side of the ball. So, you know, I think those are a couple of guys along with the Mooney that, you know, uh, so far have impressed. And I'm sure there's probably others as well. Uh, but again, we're, we're only – technically a week into camp. So it's going to be interesting to hear, you know, what comes up this week. You know, it's interesting you bring up uh, that your scout friend uh, Vaki stood out to him um, just in general. I think when, you know, when you're an NFL scout or just in general, I don't know what, what level the scout was at you talk to, but when you're a scout, you go through, you're watching games, you probably have a player in particular or you're watching, but just in general, when you're watching over the course of a game and plays, other guys are going to stand out. So I imagine that scout or whoever it was is watching the USC game and you see the shoestring tackle that Sione Vaki made on the USC. I can't remember if it was the receiver, running back, whatever it was in the open field where it was, he originally wasn't ruled down. Then they reviewed it and he was down like, that's a really hard tackle to make. Yeah. There's a lot of guys that just in general, those are the type of tackles and the special plays you're looking when you're trying to fill needs at the next level that you do identify and look at. So I'm not surprised that Vaki stood out to other people who have been uh, just watching in general. And it feels like Vaki is in for a special season to go along with the Cole Bishop and a lot of these other guys on this, uh, this Utah defense overall too. And this Utah defense is loaded with so much talent, Michelle, that a lot of the players are being nominated for various preseason awards. We are going to touch on those players in a second, but first want to talk to you guys about our friends, at bird dogs bird dogs make you look good a bird dog stretchy khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg giving you a truly sculpted look bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as lululemon but fit way better they fit way better than regular shorts because those regular shorts they're made of a stiff restricting cotton bird dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khakis but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement bird dogs use anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long i wear my bird dogs constantly in fact our good friends at bird dogs just sent me a couple more pairs of them they've become my preferred short of choice and they can become your guys's preferred short of choice too now because you guys can go in and get a great deal from bird dogs by going to birddogs.com slash locked on college or enter the promo code locked on college for a free white tech hat with your order that's birddogs.com slash locked on college or promote code locked on college for a free white tech hat hat you won't want to take your bird dogs off we promise you Michelle, final thing I want to touch on today is just in general, um, one thing when I'm always trying to put the show together, you know, there's always like, okay, what am I going to talk about in this segment, this segment, this mm-hmm. segment? And I'm like, oh, I haven't mentioned the Utah football players who have gotten nominated for the awards. The latest one, I believe Cam, Cam Rising was just nominated for the Davey O'Brien Award, uh, one of the 
nation's most prestigious quarterback preseason honors in general. And I was like, oh, I could talk about that. And it's like, oh, wait, Junior Tifuna got nominated for this. Thomas Yasmin, Brant Keithy got nominated for this. It's just a trend where there are so many preseason awards and Utah football players are occupying so many of it. And uh, to me in general, just speaks to what a good place the program is in that you have. So it's a well-rounded roster. We have so many guys who in the Pac-12 are considered amongst the best at their position or even nationally are considered to be of the elite of the elite in general. It speaks to the recruiting of this Utah football program. And in my opinion, Michelle, just how good of a place they're in, not just in the present, but also in the future as well, because we'll be a year from now. And I think Lander Barton is going to be popping up on even more of these lists in general. Could be a guy like a Landon King. I don't know, depending on the type of season he has, even with the loaded tight end depth overall. All but a, a Sione Vaki, a guy we were just talking about, right? Who a lot of people don't know right now outside of the Utah circles, but soon, I mean, he's already drawn the looks from certain scouts. It's only going to be time before the media starts to take notice as well. So it really does just speak to how well-rounded and deep this Utah football program is and what a good position they're in as right now, currently a top 15 program in college football. Yeah. I, and I mean, it was this way last year too. And, and, to be honest, I was able to focus and pay attention a little bit more to to who's getting these nods and announcements uh, coming their way. Uh, conference realignment, yeah. now. <laughs> like, <laughs> but but I know that there were a lot of guys that were up for awards last year too, and it just I felt like that's all I was typing in the yeah. lead up to the season, and you know it's more or less been the same this year. Uh, just. I, I don't know. It feels like every day I wake up to new emails about, oh, so-and-so is named to this award and so-and-so is named to this award. And, you know, it, it does. It speaks it speaks very highly, I think, to the fact that Utah's developed a roster, like a P5 roster, a legit P5 roster. Yeah. There's depth there. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter that now every year you, there's some turnover. And I think this year is going to be a little bit bigger than we've seen in the last couple of years. But uh, you know, that that now we're kind of getting into the we don't have to sit for a year or two and develop these guys and then we'll be, you know, kind of on top of our game again. It's we just they're kind of to a point where they can reload a little bit. Um, there might be some deficiencies in some places where they have to maybe focus a little more effort in into development still. Uh, but, you know, overall. You lose, you lose a couple of guys to graduation or, or the transfer portal, and they seem to be just fine. They seem to be in a place where they're really, I think, secure in who they are and what they are and what they bring to the table. And, you know, I, for Utah fans, I think you have to love that, especially with the current landscape of college football um, and especially looking to the future where there's going to be more opportunity to do the college football playoff, uh, you know, to also – continue winning conference championships uh, in, a, in a new conference. And uh, that that's just kind of, I think, you know, what people are going to need to to keep doing in order to keep themselves relevant in whatever whatever's happening in college football right now. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, you even speak like just the point of transfers or players graduate in general. That's what's also nice for this Utah program is they've become a destination for transfers. Mm -hmm. Last couple of years now, looking back at a Mahmoud Diabate, a guy from Florida this year, it's a Leovani Demuni. We already mentioned Pittman, Simmons. There are just so many players who, once they move on from their schools, they, they want to come be a part of Kyle Whittingham's program. And it speaks to what a strong position the, the team is in overall. And it's great that we're so close to football coming back, Michelle. We have fall yes. camp rolling on constantly, basically. Uh, conference realignment's pretty much behind us, although it might be a couple new nuggets and things that still come out of it overall. But just in general, people want more Utah football. Where should they head over to check their stuff out at? Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, you go to kslsports.com, click on the Utah Utes tab. Most of that stuff's going to be me. And then you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and now threads at <laughs> Bodkin KSL Sports. Thanks for joining us, Michelle. Anytime. That's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Utes, but we'll be back with you tomorrow talking more things related to Utah football.